So now we go into chapter five and Victor's child is born. Now he's been working on this for about two years at much longer than nine months, but it wasn't instantaneous. It wasn't overnight. And he writes in chapter, uh, or excuse me, Walton relates in chapter five. And it was in November. November happens to be my birth month as well, but Victor didn't create me. How can I describe me and my emotions at this catastrophe? Or how delineate the wretch whom with such infinite pains and care I had endeavored to form? His limbs were in proportion, and I had selected his futures as beautiful, beautiful, great God. His yellow skin scarcely covered the work of muscles and arteries beneath. His hair was of a lustrous black and flowing, his teeth of a pearly whiteness. But these luxuriances only formed a more hard contrast with his watery eyes that seemed almost of the same color as the dun white sockets in which they were set, his shriveled complexion and straight black lips. And then he goes on to say, I had worked hard for nearly two years for the sole purpose of diffusing life into an inanimate body. For this I had deprived myself of rest and health. I had desired it with an ardor that far exceeded moderation. But now I had finished the beauty of that dream vanished and the breathless horror and disgust filled my heart. So what does he do? He runs away. He goes to bed for heaven's sake. Not a second care about the creature. Doesn't even say, hey, you know, how you doing? Uh, no, just deserts him, goes to bed, and then he has a dream, and this dream is very important. He said, I was disturbed by the wildest dreams. I thought I saw Elizabeth in the bloom of health, walking in the streets of Ingolstadt. Delighted and surprised, I embraced her, but as I imprinted the first kiss on her lips, they became livid with the hue of death. Her features appeared to change, and I thought that I held the corpse of, the de of my dead mother in my arms. A shroud enveloped her form, and I saw the grave worms crawling on the folds of the flannel. Now, this is important for several reasons. One, Elizabeth kind of turns into his mother, which is a little perverse and strange. It is also foreshadowing, because later in the book, we're going to find out what happens to Elizabeth. It's also important because, again, it shows Mary Shelley's connection with Love and death and birth and death. Victor is given birth, and yes, I'm using that rather loosely, to the creature. And now he dreams of holding Elizabeth in his arms. And what should be a very tender and loving embrace turns into the embrace of the grave. And so this is all very important. And then he um, is can, becomes fully awake. And before him, he sees his offspring. It says, I beheld the wretch, the miserable monster whom I had created. He held the curtains of the bed, uh, and his eyes, if they may be called, were fixed on me. His jaws opened, and he muttered some inarticulate sounds, while a grin wrinkled his cheeks. And instead of responding positively, now it doesn't seem like the creature's trying to hurt him here. Victor, again, he absconds. He takes off. He has no, um, he has responsibility towards this creature, but he doesn't follow through. And so um, he basically just deserts the, his, his offspring. Now, I want to point out that the subtitle of this book is called The Modern Prometheus. And this is important because in Greek myth, Prometheus was a male mother. He was a titan who created uh, men. Now, he didn't create women. He created men. And sometimes it said that Athena breathed life into these clay figures that Prometheus had made. But Athena is the offspring of, of Zeus, another male mother. And so her um, interaction with that is, um, is misleading. Now, Prometheus sacrificed a lot for his offspring. As a matter of fact, he stole fire, when fire is also a symbolic of enlightenment and knowledge, remember. 
and gave it to them against um, Zeus's express orders not to do that. And for that, he was chained to a rock in the Caucasus Mountains where um, either a vulture or an eagle tore his liver out every day, and it grew back every night. He was later rescued by Heracles and was given immortality by Chiron uh, the centaur. Prometheus is a good father. He takes care of his offspring, even to the point of suffering for them. And his name means foresight, so he even knows what's going to happen. Victor is blind. Victor has no foresight. And Victor is a bad father. He is a bad male mother. And he runs off and he leaves his offspring and doesn't really even seem to even think about him again. And then he sees Clover. He's walking down the streets and surprise coincidence, there's Clerval, his friend. And Clerval comes in and takes care of him. And, and, and Victor goes into um, a, a really bad, exhausting illness. Clerval at this point is almost playing the part of the mother. He is the nurse. He takes care of Victor. But unlike Carolyn Beaufort, he doesn't die. And then it is spring, and Victor begins to feel better. And uh, uh, and then we go into chapter 6. And I know this is taking a long time. I just have so much I want to tell you. <laughs>